Hello everyone, thank you for joining on my another live stream. So it's the uh, 1st of August 2020 on Saturday. So we have a new month just started and hopefully you have a great weekend right now. Okay, so today I will talk about some of the uh, psychology and money management related topic. And it's going to be how to avoid losses in three steps. So today, usually I talk about um, the psychology or money management related topics on Saturdays, every, every Saturdays, because the market is closed anyways. And tomorrow, I will give you a uh, weekly Ichimoku Forex forecast on the currency pairs and commodities and some indexes to prepare for the next week trace. So here we go. Let's see who's here first. All right. Hi, um, AJ. Thank you for joining from India. Good to see you. And I view, thank you for joining. Good to see you also. And Titus, thank you for joining. Good to see you. Anas and Alan, good to see you. Happy Saturday. Sure, sure. All right, from Philippines, thank you for joining. All right, and Jack Smith, thank you for joining as well. Um, yeah, trading edge is 5 or 15 minute chart. Um, basically, I use both. So I've already talked about it yesterday when I, when I did some analysis um, as to uh, which time frame I take. Uh, 15 or 5, right? Um, it depends on what kind of confirmations, how many confirmations I can capture. So please look back at yesterday's live on Friday, and I explained that based on the GBPUSD um, uh, trading edges. Yep. All right. WM, thank you for joining. And Honda46, uh, thank you for joining as well. All right. In Stockholm. All right. Sunny day. That's great. That's great. Yeah. In Tokyo, today's a sunny day. A very good weather today. Very nice to uh, walk around town and uh, just be outside relaxing. Yeah, just uh, walking by the river was very nice. Hi Vincent, thank you for joining. Good to see you. And Melanie, good to see you from UK. All right, all right. Clear uh, 80, 18 Celsius degrees. Oh, that's uh, qu quite uh, qu cool. That's good. Got up to a 33 yesterday. Wow, wow. There's a huge range uh, every day in UK. I hope you don't catch a cold in that kind of uh, unstable, you know, weather or the temperature. Hi, Adrinas. Thank you for joining. And Kawi, good to see you. And Karim, thank you for joining as well. All right, Kai, good to see you. All right, you got the stamp. <laughs> All right, Extra Mix, thank you for joining as well from Tanzania. All right, good to see you. All right, and Serial, Konnichiwa, thank you for joining as well. And Kayon, good to see you again. And yeah, as always, yeah, thank you for uh, your reminder to place the like button. So please do uh, before you leave so that it keep me, keeps me going. Thank you for the reminder. And be happy. Thank you for joining from Greece. And Duke, good to see you. All right, uh, Russell, good to see you as well. And uh, Sulis, uh, Sulistio, thank you for joining from Indonesia. All right, good to see you. And Shanti from India, New Delhi. All right, good to see you. Mr. Fernandez, good to see you as well. Uh, Robin, Popo, Jack Smith, and Taizo. Anthony, thank you for joining from Jakarta. All right, and um, uh, Char Sharon Rion, thank you for joining. And uh, JC, all right, and Kai, I think I've uh, said your name already. Thank you for joining from Middle East. All right. And uh, Kasi, uh, Kasi Raj, and uh, SJ, um, Boen Toro. Good to see you again, Christian AB. Thank you for joining, everyone. All right. So let's get started right now. Let's get started. So, um, all right. Hold on. So, yeah, today I will talk about uh, some of the. Uh, Money management and psychology are related to topic because the market is closed anyways. So here is the slide that I just created about like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> it's fresh made, so so that you can uh, you can take a look at it. All right, so there you go. So three steps to avoid the losses. All right, so um, I've actually I've decided to talk about this topic because I've got this email. Uh, from uh, from one of uh, my followers on on the YouTube, 
Oh yeah, before starting anything, right? Basically, all this information is based on my own experience. So when you take trades, please do. I will risk. So I got this email. It says, "Hi, hello, Kay. I have been watching your videos for the last uh, three months, and your videos are amazing. Can you tell me which pair to take trade, and what to what do I need to do to pay attention to? Keep up the good work, and Nathan. So thank you for uh, sending me the email, Nathan, and stay gold. And so." The question is, uh, can you tell me which pair to take trade? And what would you answer? Can you type your answer here on the chat box so that um, I can uh, refer to it? Yeah, which pair to take trades is, I think, uh, this is one of the most frequently asked questions. And also, what do I need to do <clears throat> to uh, pay attention? Keep, uh, keep a pay, keep attention going on the market. What to do, right? And it looks like right, he doesn't want to look at the market all day long. But he's asking which, when to look at the market is, I think, the question. So first question, which pair to take trade? And second question, when to look at market? So what was, what, what, what was your answer to, this, uh, to these questions? If you can type it out, that will be interesting. All right, let's see. Um, in the meantime, Let's see who else is here. All right, um, Russell from Turkey, thank you for joining. And Talal, good to see you. Bogdan, good to see you as well. Christian, how's Bitcoin ca uh, cash adoption in Japan? Oh yeah, it's been, I think it's coming along. Uh, in some shops, we can actually do shopping with the Bitcoin. So I think it's coming along. It's not really popular yet. <clears throat> Happy 1st August for all. Sure, sure. It's becoming August now, so we feel fresh a little bit for this uh, new new month. All right, Kayun, Mr. K, Super Live coming soon. Sure, sure. All right, Bijou, thank you for joining. Very good, very good. All right, GPP USD. Yep, yeah, yep. That was a pair that I was talking yesterday to catch some of the trading edges in fifteen or five. All right, let's see. Imagine that 1,000 people join and K have to read every single name person to start. <laughs> if that's the case, I won't. I won't. Yeah, I'm not going to have a time to read all these um, people's name. But um, whenever I feel like to, I want to do. Because uh, I welcome everybody here. All right, so trending pairs. All right, yeah, trending pairs is actually the great answer to uh, to watch. Uh, some pairs, yep, any pair on some trend, exactly, exactly, all right. So which pair, you don't care which pair it is, like, uh, or any, any which commodity or crypt, crypt, cryptocurrencies, it's okay, you think, or do you think you better stick with, like, uh, stick to some uh, specific currencies? I'm break-even trader for nine months in a good way. Sure, sure. Break even or already good. It's already good. Yeah. All right. Christian, the solution to wait pair to take trade. Your best trade is buy gold and Bitcoin cash. That are the best pairs actually. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of technical analysis, which one would be the great one? Is a question. I use only Ichimoku. All right. All right, Arpit and Jason, good to see you. All right, Nathan, could, uh, you could trade what you uh, what you want, but never without Ichimoku. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Ichimoku is a great tool, and uh, I know that's why you're here to to um, you know to gain more knowledge to take trades with the Ichimoku. But yeah, um, so here's my answers. Right, here's my answers. So. To me, um, actually, I replied with these uh, three answers. So, and actually, this is the topic for today. So, I recommend someone who is still struggling to which pair to pick and when to watch the market. Um, you can follow these three steps. So, for those who are still losing or still cannot be able to win for long in long term, these are the three steps that you can take. So, first. You focus on a few pairs, 
right? You don't go for like lots of pairs, but you only focus on few pairs. And second, you identify a trend of a trend, right? You identify direction of a trend is also important. And then um, finally, identify which trend you'll be writing on. And these three are very important because these three steps will help you limit yourself. So, you know, in school or in, in a workplace, for example, uh, we tend to find our ability to bring the most within the limited and restricted environment, right? Because um, you have a guide, you will be guided to do certain things in a school or in a workplace. So in that way, we're not really free. So um, however, in, in trading, right? However, in trading, we need to learn to limit and restrict ourselves. Then focus on how to perform well within that environment you created for yourself. So as you can see, the steps to grow yourself is completely different from the ones you might be experiencing so far in a school or in a workplace. So today's talk is all about limiting yourself and restrict restricting yourself. And this is something that I wanted to, to remember today, but uh, the, the pros of Forex or stock trading is being free, right? We're free, you know, uh, whether you buy or sell, when you take trades or when not to take trades, which pair, which stock markets you want to take trade or not are completely free. And that's a great thing about trading individually. But on the backside, the cons of trading is too much freedom. And traders might get caught into a trap of too much freedom. So I will explain how to discipline yourself in that sense today. So number one, focus on few pairs. All right, so just focus on a few pairs. So this means that you are not winning. Uh, so this means that uh, if you are not winning stably yet, I recommend you to look at only a few pairs. And the pairs I recommend are the ones that are familiar with, with you. So uh, this is based on my experience. But for me, I used to look at only USDJPY for the first one or two years. And, um, you know, let me tell you the reasons why. I was born and raised in Japan. I was actually born in Osaka and moved to Tokyo when I was 13. But, you know, um, I was born in Japan. So to me, Japan's economy is very much familiar with me. So I decided to trade on JPY crosses first. JPY crosses first. Also, um, I used to live in the US for about eight, eight years in the past. So the economy and what's going on in the US was you know, uh, somewhat familiar with me. Ever since I came back to Japan, um, I pay attention to the news in the US. So for me, right, for me, both the currencies of Japan and the US uh, were very familiar with me. And that's why I chose to look at the pair uh, USDJPY from the beginning. Then once I get used to it, um, I added Euro on my watch list. So I started to watch USDJPY, EURUSD, and EURJPY next. Then I started to realize some relationship among these three currencies or three pairs. Um, you know, for example, when Euro gets stronger, then EURJPY, EURUSD will go up. Or when JPY gets stronger, then uh, USDJPY or um, EURJPY will go down. Right? So there are some correlations between these currencies. And once you find a good strategy that applies to a specific market, then you can start applying the same strategy to other pairs also. But the point is that uh, before looking at lots of currency pairs or stock markets, uh, I recommend you to stick to one or two or three currency pairs and create some uh, foundations first in terms of like technical analysis or uh, strategies technical strategies or one might impact the market will be different. Like USDJPY, of course, uh, will be impacted by the, some of the news in Japan and the US. So, um, and also, 
uh, some other news, right? Uh, like uh, COVID-19 or uh, other news, right? What's happening in Hong Kong might be affecting the U.S. also. So, um, you know, the relationship, you know, correlation might be different. So, my opinion is that the uh, if you are not focusing on one pair, then I recommend you to st stick to one pair first, and then start to expand a uh, little by little. So I say this because uh, in the beginning, I used to watch like uh, twenty some pairs or almost like thirty pairs. Uh, I had like six panels in front of me, and I was scalping in the first uh, in the first beginning, and that was very tiring, right? Because that was not my style. First of all, I used to look at the chart, um, you know, uh, for a long time. After I went back home. Uh, from the full-time job, I went back home and stick to these uh, currency pairs and I was only focusing on the trading edges. I mean, o only looking for the signals to take trades, to take buy or sell. And um, yeah, so that was my first experience when I started the uh, Forex trading for real. And at some point, um, in that sense, right, I didn't know which pair will affect, you know, will be affected by which other currency pairs or currencies or any news. So I was basically purely um, looking at the signals to take trades, and I kept losing at that time. So after that, after that experience, I've you know closed all these pairs and only started to look at the USDJPY. And then I realized something new, right? I only look at the one currency pair and just stick to it. And also I run the Frex tester for, and um, I look at the, uh, you know, I only uh, backtest the USDJPY, right? I was not really backtesting on any other currencies, but I was only uh, backtesting USDJPY in Frex tester for. And I, re I start to realize some pattern in USDJPY, right? Uh, depending on the uh, the time or the year, uh, you know there are certain movements in USDJPY, like uh, some chart patterns will be appeared a couple of times, or like a double top, for example, or double double bottom will be appearing uh, in the uh, in the year of uh, 2017 in USDJPY, and that was um, one of the finding in a bigger bigger uh, time frames. But uh, it doesn't really happen in other currencies, right? USDJPY had only like these double tops, double bottoms, uh, more frequently than any other currencies. So this is one of the findings, uh, you know, uh, as a result of sticking to, you know, only one currency pair. So and you can find, you know, so many wisdom uh, by sticking to one currency pair and backtesting it and actually forward test also by looking at the real charts. And I think this is a very important uh, thing to do it, right? Um, so if you're still not really familiar, right? F familiar with these currencies, especially like exotics, you might be uh, not really visiting that country, or you might, you might not gonna be so familiar with these cultures also. And then my recommendation is to stay away from these currencies. So that's the first uh, step that you can take and then once you pick up few few, few pairs to take trace then the next step will be this one to identify a direction of a trend and this is the strategy that i you know usually say in the kts uh, case trading strategy so um, look at a couple of pairs and identify which way the price is going on the day uh, in a daily chart and four hour chart. So usually I look at, so this is also what I do, but when I wake up, wake up in the morning, what I do is I look at the markets and I try to identify which way the prices are going in, in a daily chart and a four hour chart. And when I, found, when I find the daily chart flat and four hour chart also flat, then I don't look at that pair. Most likely, I will come back to that pair in the evening time in Japan after the London session starts, and um, yeah, I start to look at these uh, time frames. But in the morning, if there's no trend, 
then I just stay away from the market. So it, I, I think it depends on uh, where you live, right? Which time, fr uh, time zone you're living. But, um, you know, never take trades when it's ranging, right? Try to identify which pair is on the trend. And if not, then just stay away from the market so that you can also, you know, limit and restrict yourself that way. And in this way, you can feel the importance of the patience. So when it's ranging, for example, in a daily chart, 4-hour chart, when it's ranging, going up and down, or Kijun Sen flat and Kumo flat, then um, the price will go up and down. So even if you take a buy, at some point, it might go backwards anytime soon, within a day. So it's not really time efficient that way to take trades. So because time efficiency is a very key to success in Forex or any stock market trading also, when you are a day trading or a swing trading. So it's better to catch the wave and just try to ride on it. So that's the second step that you can take. And finally, identify which trend you will be riding is actually the third step you can take. So you can use the trend follow strategy, uh, which I say in this uh, YouTube channel. Is uh, KTS, K Trading Strategy. So um, the PDF is actually available for anyone for free. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, you can uh, download it from the link below. And also I have a series of videos of my strategy, KTS, on my playlist, KTS playlist. So um, you can come to my YouTube channel and uh, click on the playlist and you can, uh, you can watch these videos later. But um, yeah, trend follow strategy is also important, right? So, because I am a trend follower, right? I never go against a trend, but I follow the trend and take trades. So let's say when daily chart is uptrending, I won't look for the selling edge, right? I only look for the buying edge when it's going up. So for example, uh, if, I could, if I can pull up the real chart now, so here is a Euro USD, and this is a, hold on, let me pull up the daily chart. All right, so here is a Euro USD daily chart, and you can see that there is a beautiful uptrend now, right? Um, Kumo Senko Span B going up, Senko Span A up, and Kijun Sen also moving up. So no doubt this is a stable uptrend. So in this case, you never look for the sell chance, right? You only look for the buy chance by following the uptrend on the daily chart. So so that, you know, my view, as soon as I look at this, this kind of market, my view is fixed to buy, right? I only look for where to buy. So where to buy is the right question to ask yourself in this kind of market, right? You never want to sell. So you might think that uh, in a daily chart, right, the last candle was bearish. So you might think to sell. In fact, uh, when you look at the smaller time frame, like 5, it's going down. Because on Friday, it was a downtrend in the smaller time frame. So yeah, here is a 5 minute chart. And you can see that this is going down clearly. Price is below this Kumo. And Chikou Span is below these candles also now. So this is downtrend in 5, but I would still still look look for the chance to buy right because the daily chart is still uptrending so you don't want to look for the sell chance anymore so um, let's say um, I take a buy in these areas I, I take a buy on these pushbacks hold on you might see me taking the buy or on this pushback little pushback I might be buying it and when you see me buying in these places, you might think that I'm going against the trend, but actually that's not true. Because I am actually following the trend in the daily chart at that time. So I take losses or I take break evens when it's going down, but as long as the daily chart has gone up, I just follow it. Right, I just follow it. So um, like I said, right, uh, the forex trading or any trading is actually free. Right, uh, we have a freedom of uh, when to take trades, which pair to take trades, and uh, yeah, how many lot sizing you go for. 
right? It's everything's up to you. And nobody takes the responsibility of your trace, right? Uh, everybody is um, taking trace and taking responsibility in ourselves. So, but, um, so, um, actually, I've, I've said this before, but uh, the operation is very easy in trading. You just click on buy or sell, and that's it. You can execute trades by yourself very easy, right? Even kids can do it. Right, kids can click on the buy button or sell button, so that's so that's that easy. But um, when it comes to a strategy, or when it comes to uh, finding the edges, it becomes more difficult, of course. But at the same time, we're free, right? So, um, so the point that I wanted to say today is we have to set our eyes towards one direction, right? Uh, we cannot see the different see the market in like a uh, two-sided like uh you know ways like uh you might think it's a buy in daily chart but if you look at the five you might think to sell so okay let's take a sell here right you might think like that but um in fact uh if you keep doing it then you might get lost cut many times and uh you can't more importantly you cannot extend the profit as much as possible. So always follow the bigger time frame is a key, right? Use a trend follow strategy by KTS. And the price will go up or down until it stops is actually uh, one of my philosophies also. As long as price keeps going up, I, I ride on it. So in this case, hold on. Or is the chart? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So in the daily chart, I see that this is uptrend because the price is still above the Kumo, right? Above the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, and it's correspond above the candles. So this is uptrending right now. So I look for the buy chance. But maybe you might think that this might be a retracement because there is a weak point in uppers in this area and there might be a recent high in the past so you might think that this might be reverse and you might think to, think to catch this uh, you know a uh, trading edge um, but um, to me it might happen right it might happen but to me because this is still uptrending in my strategy I still look for buy chance until the Kijun Sen goes flat and Senko Span B flat and Senko Span B flat until they, these confirmations happen, this is uptrend for me. So, in the next couple of uh, days, uh, next week, uh, these lines might be flat. And in that case, I won't look for the buy chance anymore. But right now, this is going up, so I just look for the buy chance still. So yeah, the price will go up or down until it, it stops, right? And until then, you just follow it. You just follow it. So this is the case when it's uptrending, but let's say like a Euro GBP. And if you look at the Euro GBP daily chart, this is in a range clearly, right? The Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat right now. So this is in a range and this is a pair that I will be staying away as per the daily chart, right? It's flat. But Euro USD, is a beautiful uptrend, so it's worth to take trades on this kind of pair. So we have to narrow down ourselves in terms of um, how, um, what to look for in the market, and which way we're taking trades. And yeah, so I, I think I already covered this one, but identify which trend you will be riding on: weekly chart, daily chart, or Four hour or one hour, etc. You have to be able to identify which trend, which time frame trend you're actually riding on, so that the um, you can be more time efficient to take trades. All right. So finally, so this is kind of wrap up. But um, so three steps to avoid the losses. Right. First, focus on few pairs. Right. Uh, you don't spread. You don't want to spread all these. Uh, pairs 
uh, by focus on a few pairs, one or two or three pairs we focus on, and then identify a direction of the trend, and identify which trend you'll be riding on is also important. So do not focus on quick money, but focus on the stable profit in the long run. But to do that, um, you need these three steps to follow. All right, so let me come back to some of the comments now. All right, um, hi Matuwes, Lewe, thank you for joining. To see you and Christian in terms of technicals, the trading once uh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of cut in half. Alessandro, thank you for joining. All right, a pair with a trend. Yep, that is important. Right, so always write on a trend on a trading pair, uh, trending pair. So Euro USD is uptrending, and GBP USD in the daily chart also uptrending now. So I will pick these two currencies to uh, to take trades next week. Yep. All right, Nish, thank you for joining from UK and Keyon. Uh, I would like to ask you, does every currency market have a unique pattern? Uh, yes, I think so. I think so. Yeah, sometimes in this in this kind of a, you know, chart example, like um, uh, the time cycle is very unique in this uh, GBPUSD. So time cycles may apply on a specific currency, but on other currencies, uh, it's, it might gonna work so much. And also the chart patterns, right? Uh, and also the indicators like uh, stochastic gold cross, dead cross might work on a specific currency, but it might gonna work so much on other currencies. So yeah, um, the patterns are very unique among currencies and also what works, what doesn't work is different among currencies also. Hi Mehdi, thank you for joining, and Bijou with Ichimoku, uh, what all indicators should we follow? RSI, MACD, ADX, Stochastics. Um, you can actually combine any st uh, any indicators in my opinion. Personally, I use Stochastics because um, this is my favorite uh, indicator. But I used to use RSI, MACD, but uh, myself, I realized that uh, Stochastics worked the best for me on this 30 10 10 setting and that's why I just use this one because this is based on my experience all right uh, Chavdak thank you for joining from Honduras all right the trending pairs are the most volatile and carries the most volume sure sure yeah, so we can let the time work for you, right? As uh, Robert Kiyosaki says, he says, uh, let the money work for you. But in trading, we can uh, let the time work for you. So time efficiency is a key. All right, Melanie, be aware of any uh, major fundamental news. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, fundamental news are also important because um, we know which, uh, which kind, what kind of uh, news will happen in which day. So why not watching it, right? It might not gonna affect so much. Like uh, last week, FOMC was not really impacting the market so much, but it might be. It might be. So it's good to uh, keep our eyes on these uh, fundamental news, especially the ones that are big, uh, big potentially in these uh, currencies. All right. Hi, Onekachi. Thank you for joining. And you uh, print that apart on i3 paper. One year to confirm. Yep, yep. <laughs> you can print uh, the the uh, the forex pair. Yeah, actually, that's what I used to do, right? Uh, I used to print these uh, currencies uh, in different time frames on the papers, and I was actually analyzing in the paper. So yeah, I think that is a great, uh, uh, great way to train yourself also. All right, Milan, good to see you. And Kiyo, Mr. K, I would like to ask you, 
does every currency market has a unique pattern? Yes, I think so. All right. All right, let's see. Boltman, so I'm stick in a Euro USD with a max loss. Will it go up? Um, so as long as the trend is going up, then you should be looking for the buy chance. So you have to know when to stop looking to buy or until when you look for buy is a question to ask. Hi Bugsy, thank you for joining from Australia. All right. Are you saying that the European and American sessions are better to ta take trades than the Asian sessions? I think so. I think so. Usually in Asian sessions, the volume is less and also the trend is less. So, but uh, sometimes I happen to see the trend in Asian sessions, then I write on it. I write on it. But um, if, I, if not, then I just wait until the London session starts. And sometimes a Tokyo box breakout might happen that time. That will be a great trading edge. And later in a New York session also, uh, there might be some trends also. So yeah, basically I, I look at the chart and take trades where there is a trend. And usually uh, European and American sessions are the ones that are trending more than Asian session. Hiya san, thank you for joining. To see you and Keyon. I would like to ask you, does every currency? Yeah, I think so, I think so. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to repeat your questions many times. Yeah. I'm watching your questions now. Okay, do you employ oscillator like stochastics when trading with Ichimoku? Um I use stochastics, yeah. I use stochastics to go along. So is everybody, everybody clear on this, on this today's topic? Three steps to avoid losses, right? Focus on few pairs. So if you're watching so many pairs without knowing any fundamentals or any, uh, you know, without knowing the patterns, the unique patterns of the currency, I recommend you to decrease the number of the watch list um, to like a one or two or three pairs and just stick to it, right? Just to stick to it. And identify the trend, right? Identify direction of a trend is the second step. And then identify which trend you will be riding on is also very important. All right, so I can, I can answer to these technical questions many times, but if you don't focus on these three steps, then, you know, you can't, you can't, um, you can't find the answer. All right. All right, MZM, thank you for joining from Sendai. All right. Good to see you. All right, let's see. I'm confused when I put the stop loss or take profit in Ichimoku. Can we can tell us where is a good stop loss or take profit in Ichimoku and time frames? Um, I set the stop loss in lower time frames. And I take profit whenever the trend ends. And this is actually explained on my KTS playlist uh, in, in the past, so you can uh, look at these videos. So let me see if uh, there's any uh, questions that are related to th today's topic. Because I can just keep answering to your questions, but it's nice to stick with one theme at a time. So that the uh, you don't lose the focus. All right, Alex, thank you for joining. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been a while. Thank you for joining. Yeah, so all these technical analysis is important, but uh, money management and psychological management is also important. I think these are more important than the technical analysis. All 
Okay. I watched the trend on 30 in, in turn 5. I think it's good. I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I capture the trend in bigger time frames like a daily 4 hour chart. And I confirm the trend in 1 hour 30. And I take trace. I take trace um, in 15 or 5. And if I don't see any trends in a daily chart, 4-hour chart, then I just stick to the trend in the smaller, lower time frames, which are uh, daily, I'm mean, sorry, uh, 1 hour, 30, and take trades in 15 or 5. I don't have the telegram. I don't have the telegram. Or... Um, yeah, I don't do that actually. I used to do it, but not anymore because um, I cannot keep track on these like messages. So many messages will be coming on the uh, WhatsApp also. I used to do the WhatsApp, but not anymore because I can't keep track on these tons of messages. All right, um, Chavdak, uh, with my Father, we are using KT strategy. We like it so much, it's too comfortable. We will practice it for this time. Thank you for searching it. Sure, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Hi, Zeropia. Thank you for joining. Good to see you. Yeah, I will give my analysis on USD CHF uh, tomorrow. So, tomorrow will be a uh, weekly Ichimoku weekly forecast. So uh, yeah, I will talk about the currency pairs that are on my watch list. Actually, these are the pairs that I usually look at and take trace. And this gold, uh, gold is actually another one that I take trace. Yeah, I don't take trace on indexes, but I start to look at them because it can build up some uh, some more confidence. To take trace, to, to take trace on these forex pairs, and also, um, I'm starting to uh, taking trace on these indexes also in stock markets. All right. Hi, Powell. Thank you for joining. Hi, Kay. Thanks for so much for what you're doing. Sure, you're welcome. Stay gold. How many pairs should you forecast? Um, so you better forecast on one or two or three currency pairs at most uh, for the beginning until you can be stable, profit, profitable. Yeah, like I said, um, I used to stick to uh, USDJPY and EURJPY and EURUSD. <clears throat> so now I watch these currencies, EURUSD. Euro, USD, J, uh, GBP, and JPY, and CAD, and AUD pairs. And I feel comfortable with this, right? I feel, I feel comfortable with these pairs now to watch. So that's why uh, these are actually on my watch list. All right, Alex, I have a relevant question. Uh, do you get negative emotion after a losing st uh, streak or you have succeeded in a probabilities approach and know that there is a random distribution between wins and losses. And thus, by keeping losses short and extending wins, you will get your way. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I used to have a negative uh, emotion uh, in the past, right? When I lose, uh, I, get, uh, I get upset and, you know, I shut down the PC and I try to win back. I used to try to win back a lot uh, when I was a newbie, but now uh, it's not the case. Yeah, because uh, I'm not really focusing on the winning rate so much, but my focus is actually the risk to reward ratio in terms of the pips and in terms of the money. So 
um yeah yeah that's that's my that's my experience i mean uh yeah i used to be upset a lot when i was keep losing like uh, three times of losses or four time losses then i got upset but not not anymore now yeah well actually um i don't i don't uh keep trading when i have three consecutive losses i don't i stop trading because uh, i know that there must be something wrong so i calm myself down i shut the pc without being upset and i analyze my own trace for the last three trades i analyze it and until i come up with the answer of what went wrong i keep looking at this uh looking back this trace and once i find the answer then i start to look at the market again all right what is the criteria uh, to know that the price is going to reverse uh, yeah, there are so many like uh, signals or like indications that the price might go reverse. Like uh, you know, double top, head and shoulders. Divergence might be one of the reversing signals also. So yeah, I mean there's lots and lots of uh, indications for the reversal signals. All right, Postman, thank you for joining. All right. Good morning, Kay. Had a very good profit day yesterday, but still need to work on my entries and exits. I still have lots of problem. We'll be watching again your videos again. Sure, sure. Yep, yep. You focus on the Kijun Sen also with the trend. Yes, I do, I do. Whenever I, whenever I buy, it goes down. When whenever I sell, it goes up. Why it happens? Oh, <laughs> that's the. Uh, one of the uh, yeah biggest questions or biggest myth in trading, yeah I think it's all about psychology, yeah because our memory is uh, usually built and meant to be uh, uh, meant to be focused on the losses than wins. So there is a study, a psychological study that the uh, we have more pain in losses than wins. So even if you have like one loss. And even if I have uh, two wins afterwards, you know, they don't cover up. They don't cover the losses in terms of the psychology. Like, um, let's say you lose $100 and you win the same $100, but um, it doesn't cover the loss, the pain of the loss. And that's why we tend to look at the market or we tend to look at the results that way, right? The market always goes against me, right? There is a saying like that. And that's because of the psychology. Alex, thanks. And how about euphoria after very good gains? Um, yeah, I used to have that too. <laughs> yeah, I feel very good once I have a big, big win, big gain, but uh, not anymore. Not anymore now. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess um, it's time to uh, end the live. So I will be ending the live in about five minutes now. After uh, talking a little bit more. All right, Ashok, thank you for joining. Good to see you. According to your case strategy, what percentage can you say is a win and rate and losing rate? It depends on when to take trades. Yeah, I think it depends on the person. To me, my winning rate is uh, like a 35 or 40% in a monthly basis. All right. Okay. Yeah, I will talk about. Actually, I used to talk about the uh, how to use a stop loss in my past video. So um, you can look at the playlist on the KTS. Uh, you can come come to my website and scroll down a little bit, and there is a uh, picture where it says uh, case trading strategy. So when you click on this one. It will forward you to this page right here, where you can see all these videos in the past. 
and I've talked about the stop loss strategy as well in the past, so you can look at that one for, for that strategy. What leverage do you use normally, Boltman? Um, I use uh, 25 or 30 leverage. Yeah, max 25 leverage in Japan, but overseas is more, more than that. So 25 or 30 will be the leverage that I use usually. 20 to 30, I would say, 20 to 30. All right. Um, Thread run. If we follow the same stock uh, continuously, does it help to gain more insight? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Or you can stick to the same sector, maybe. Or the uh, the industry industry that you are in actually right now will be helping also. Okay. Okay. So I guess I will be ending the live and switching to the Ichimoku membership live. So. Once again, thank you for joining everyone today. I think it was a very nice dis discussion today about some of the psychology and also the money management strategy today. So tomorrow, once again, I will talk about, uh, I will cover these currency pairs and stock uh, indexes, sorry, indexes in commodity, gold and US oil. And I will give my overview as to uh, what you can prepare for upcoming week next week. So, yeah, I wish uh, I will see you there tomorrow. Okay, yep, thank you. Uh, Gamini and Shanti, WM, Lucas, you're welcome. Thank you for joining. And Taizo, thank you for joining as well. And everybody else, thank you for joining. And I hope to see you tomorrow again. So, you have a great weekend. Stay healthy and stay gold. All right. Bye for now. Matane. Thank you.